to recognize that the greenhouse gas emissions from the meat industry creates greater problems than even traffic in the world that we live in today. To recognize the amount of water, water that goes into uh, the production of meat and we simply want to create awareness. And by the way, this would be my message to you in general. We can't legislate everything. We can't change everything and everyone's habits, but people could start to learn. And through Meatless Monday, which is a, a program which started actually in the United States in World War II uh, and has spread around the world as take one day. We're not asking people to be vegetarians. We're saying take one day a week. One day a week and say, I'm not going to have meat one day, and you can have a major impact on the environment. And we'll do that uh, from the Knesset. It, it has spread throughout Israel. It's actually interesting. Israel, on this area, actually is a leading uh, country in the world where uh, about 10% of the country says that they are already uh, vegetarians and 25% have said they've cut back on their meat consumption. But this is something which, it's not legislation, but as a member of the parliament, I have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to bring awareness to the uh, broader country. There's no doubt that education is a key component. Uh, I'm proud that we have an education minister here that I can work with who also understands this core spiritual value of taking care of the world that God has handed over to us. You teach children at the youngest of ages about recycling, about all kinds of issues related to the environment. Children are very sensitive to it and they understand and they will quickly understand, put things in their various containers and their boxes in terms of recycling and just in general, they are willing to understand that the world is a beautiful world that's ours to guard and ours to protect. These are just a few areas where on a Knesset level on a parliament level, I believe we can make a difference. And like I said before, I so believe that when it comes to key issues, the faith-based approach is the way to do so. I know that we are working very hard on bringing together discussion in the Middle East about water, uh, completely removing politics from the mix, just to discuss how we, uh, the various faiths that share this region, how we can work together to improve the situation uh, in terms of the water. And we are trying as hard as we can to call all of the parties that are involved in the Knesset to get involved in these various initiatives to understand the impact this will have in the future. I cannot ignore the issue of renewable energies. You know, we think to ourselves, what natural resources do we have, at least in this country, in the Holy Land? You can't really ignore the sun. Uh, it's there, and its potential, the potential that it has to give us energy, completely clean energy is remarkable. And there are countries around the world that are investing in that, and we have to do that as well. In sun, solar, in wind, in many other areas where we have the resources, they're there, we can provide ourselves with all of the energy that we need, we just have to have the foresight and to recognize that long term, this is the way we have to be thinking. I really believe, as I look around this room and I see people from so many different faiths and I'm sure so many different countries around the world, together, I believe we can rally around this most basic value. Politics gets in the way sometimes about many issues. But I think our challenge is to look beyond the politics and find the issues which we can agree upon and start working on those issues. Just to remember that statement we said before, be careful not to spoil or destroy the beautiful world which God created for all of mankind, for all of us to enjoy. All of us are custodians together and to save and protect the beautiful world. And certainly for me, it's a pet peeve, it's a country where I live, the Holy Land, which is the place for all of these faiths. I want to conclude with a remarkable quote, a remarkable quote from a source, a little known source, called the Avot de Rav Natan. It's a source with a wealth of spiritual, core spiritual values. He says something remarkable and will apply it to all of the faiths that are here in this room, he says as follows, 
If you should happen to be holding a sapling, a small plant in your hand, when they tell you that the Messiah has arrived, whatever we believe about what the Messiah is and who the Messiah is, when we, from whatever faith, are told that the Messiah has arrived and we're holding a plant in our hand, first, he says, first plant the sapling and then go out to greet the Messiah. And I think that's the essential message over here. We are living here. We are living here in this world. And we are charged with taking care of this world. Let's all of us together, based on those very core biblical and spiritual religious ideas, work together and really make this place, make this world an even better place to live for people from all nations and people from all faiths. Thank you so much for your time and good luck to all of us.